It is time to exit the lazy girl era and enter into your productive girl era. In a world full of tasks that we want to do, tasks that we need to do, and tasks that we honestly wish would just completely disappear from our lives, <laughs> you need structure. Recently on my channel, we've talked about building routines, setting systems, glowing up. The thing is, you can build the routine, set the systems, and it might look all great on paper, but all of that is meaningless without a productive mindset. Productivity is the amount of work that can be executed over a specific period of time. But it's also important to remember that productivity is less about what you do with your time and more about what you do with your mind. And in today's video, I'm going to be helping you out with all of that. We're gonna be talking about not only how to be productive, because that is obviously important, but I'm trying to help you change your relationship with productivity because I know it can get toxic around here. It can get very toxic. Even when you are pursuing things and dreams that you want with your whole chest, with your whole heart, it can get toxic and we want to avoid that entirely. So let's get productive and let's get into this video. If you're like me, then most of your life, you measured your worth in how productive you were week to week. At the end of the week, I would look back on everything that I did, and if I didn't work at 100% every single day, I considered that a fail. So we're starting off with our perception of productivity and our honest relationship with productivity. You have to realize that you cannot work at 100% every single day. That is not sustainable and that is not realistic. Looking at productivity in that light can be damaging to your confidence. So how I now structure my life to move with more confidence and with more sustainability overall, I separate my tasks into three categories, maximum effort, moderate effort, and minimal effort, otherwise known as light work. At maximum effort, I'm giving about 80% of my energy to this task throughout the day. It's a lot of energy. It's taking up almost all of the gas in my tank. When I'm looking at tasks that take up moderate effort, I'm giving about 60% of those days. Those are the days where I'm easing into my workflow. I'm able to like ease in and ease out. And on my light work days or my minimal effort days, those are the days where I'm giving around 40%. We're tying up loose ends, right? We're closing things out for the weekend. So for me personally, I like to have two maximum productive days, right? Two days of the week where I'm pushing the gas heavy, right? And I like to have two days where I'm just moderately working, not working too hard, but not not working hard, okay? And then I like to have one day that's like light work and it's usually on Fridays. It's a roller coaster but it's also sustainable and that is the most important thing. Next, we're gonna be talking about managing our energy, not just our time. Research shows that the most productive time of the day falls between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. And it also shows that the most unproductive moments of the day fall at or around 3 p.m. And obviously that applies to that typical eight to five work structure or nine to five, depending on when you go to work. But I do think that this timeline, this graph, which I'll put it on the screen here, I do think that this can apply to people who work more non-traditional work hours, like people who work in a medical setting. I worked as a medical scribe post-grad. When I worked in the ER and had proper sleeping habits, I found that my energy levels follow that same structure. A study done by Dr. Melissa Hughes advises people to not only find their peak, but protect their peak. Your peak is the time of the day where you are most productive, okay? So for me, that lies between 7 a.m. and 12 p.m. Whenever you find and identify your peak, it is so important for you to protect that at all costs because that is going to be the time where you get the most done. So it's important for you to take the initiative to block out that time to get your work done. Some people come alive in the nighttime. Some people are most productive in the evening and they start getting a rush of energy to get work done in the evening. Because my peak is in the morning, 
it is important that I limit myself from being on my phone between 7 and 12 because that is taking mental energy away from what I really need to do. On the days where I'm trying to work at a max effort or even a moderate effort, I make sure that I wake up with intention, okay? I don't wake up scrolling too much. I don't wake up talking too much because I tend to do that a lot. Sometimes I just wake up talking. So when I know I have a lot to do, I wake up, I'm calm, okay? I start my morning off right. You just want to use as little energy as you can because you want to give that mental attention to the work that you really need to get done. Identify what your peak is daily, okay? Make sure you protect that and make sure you are doing your most daunting tasks as early as possible. Planning for efficiency within your routine. So whenever we're planning our week, we start off with the tasks, right? The most important tasks that you need to get done. So you're looking at your week as a whole, Monday through Friday, and you now need to structure it out in a way that's going to work for you and your brain, your mind, and your life overall. I followed this structure in the past as a teacher. My first year teaching, I would get so annoyed when my students wouldn't wanna work at 100% every single day. By the time year two rolled around for me, I didn't lower my expectations, but I made my expectations a little bit more realistic, okay? For me as a teacher on Mondays, I would expect moderate effort and I would structure my lesson plans in that way. So Mondays were usually like vocabulary days. We would go over 10 vocabulary words. With vocabulary words, it's all memorization. It doesn't take much mental work gathering any pre-existing knowledge that the students had on the subject that we we're talking about. And it was something that I didn't have to like force them to want to do on a Monday basically, because it was very simple. On Tuesdays were maximum effort, right? I would go in with lecture, we would apply the vocabulary words that we learned. It was full blown learning. No more easing into it. Tuesday, it's time to get busy. It's time to get to work. Wednesdays, we brought it back down to like a moderate level. I let them work in groups or on their own. A lot of times I would do like a worksheet on Wednesdays and have them really try to understand what we learned the day before. Thursdays, again, we hit the ground running. It was back up at a maximum effort. I would go over the things that they probably were still struggling with, go over any frequently asked questions, just try to get their understanding from here to here. Friday was light work. Okay, we'd start the day reviewing. We took a quick quiz that was only about 10 questions. And then the end of the class period, they were free to do whatever they wanted to do. I not only applied that then as a teacher, but I apply that in my real life now. And that's kind of how I structure my days. It's not much different. What I did there is I planned for efficiency. Yes, I have a test that I need to study for, but I also have other things I have to do in my life. What planning for efficiency does for you is it helps you avoid burnout. Burnout can be so detrimental, we don't even realize it. It does not make sense to burn yourself out because burning yourself out will set you so far back. I have never hit a level of burnout in the way that I burnt out this past summer. I can't even remember what happened in that time. That is how burnt out I was. And you do not want to hit burnout. You want to avoid burnout as much as possible because you want this journey to be sustainable. So that's why planning for efficiency and sustainability is way more important than just trying to push through every single day at 80 to 100%. I now understand how important it is to rest and to give yourself breaks and to structure your life in a way that is meaningful. When I'm talking about all of this, it definitely does pertain to jobs and careers that are more project-based or if you're a teacher, professor, student. It obviously doesn't apply to all jobs. However, these things can apply to your hobbies. These things can apply to your side hustles, trying to start a business, going back to school. This can apply to your fitness schedule. When it comes to working out, max effort is like hit workouts, running, Barry's boot camp, right? Spin. Moderate for me would be like weightlifting, Pilates, and light work is walking, yoga, right? As it relates to chores, that max work can be 
cleaning the bathroom, vacuuming and mopping the floors. Moderate work would be like doing laundry, linens, things like that. Light work is like cleaning the kitchen, washing the dishes, wiping down the countertop. You can relate this to so many different areas in your life, okay? just to be more efficient in all areas of your life. Don't just look at this as relating to people who have project-based jobs, but say you wanna start a business, say you wanna be more efficient with your chores, say you wanna be more efficient with your fitness journey, this applies to that as well. Let's move into tips for being more productive. I wanna share a few tips before we close up this video. Number one is the most obvious, limiting your distractions, okay? The thing is, we can have this crazy structure, we could set a plan in place, we could have it down on paper, we could have the purest intentions, but if we do not limit our distractions, we're not going to get close to our goals. So making sure that you are limiting your time on social media, limiting your time on the phone, making sure your people in your life know that like during work hours, you can't be texting, you can't be facetiming you will have time to scroll but get the things that you need to get done done and then have your time at the end of the day to unwind or during your lunch period to unwind or yourself a poppy or some wine and unwind after you get your work done but limit the distractions as early as possible little by little is better than nothing at all and this is just something i need you to remember taking things slow and easing into new habits is much better than doing nothing at all. I recently shared about how this worked for me within my fitness journey. I was finally able to lose weight. It took me a lot of unlearning toxic mindsets that surrounded productivity and weight loss and all this other stuff to realize that like, easing into things is going to help me sustain this journey a lot longer than like just trying to throw myself into it. Little by little is better than nothing at all. So ease into the things that you need to ease into in life, okay, is going to make a huge difference. It's going to make a huge difference, I promise. Plan your week at the beginning of the week. There is nothing more chaotic than going into the week with no structure, just knowing you have so much to do, but not having a plan for it will get you so far ahead. It's not unrealistic to plan, okay? Take 10 to 15 minutes out of your day at the beginning of the week to plan. Mondays are my pure planning days, okay? I get my brain straight on Mondays, sometimes Sundays, but a lot of times Sundays are made for like, having fun, resting, relaxing. Monday's first thing I am planning on what I'm trying to accomplish throughout the week and when I'm going to accomplish those things based off of my schedule. And it has taken me so far. If you need to download Google Calendar, then do that, okay? If you need to download Notion, then do that. I recently bought a Notion template from Becca Watson that I really love. It's like a whole daily, yearly calendar. And I started playing around with it this week and I'm loving it so much because it's super aesthetic. I will always be a Google Calendar girl, but I needed something different and something fun to play around with. So I purchased that from Becca Watson. I'll link it down below. It's pretty cute. It's kind of cute. And I might be a Notion girly now, but I'll link it down below because I love it. It's aesthetic. And um, one thing I really love about her Notion template is that you're able to prioritize your tasks for the week, kind of structure them out, kind of like how I was talking about it in this video. One big thing, Thing is you need to give yourself grace on the weeks that don't go as planned. There are going to be weeks where you are thrown a curveball. Recently, I got sick, okay? I don't know what is going around. There's a weird bug going around. That happened, literally I started getting sick on Sunday night. Sunday, okay? That's the start of my week last week. It's so annoying. So starting off the week in that way just wasn't great, but I couldn't push through that sickness. I had to rest, okay? I had to rest or it was gonna get worse. So Monday, I took the day off to just rest and get better. Tuesday, I did some slight work to get back into it, okay? Because it wasn't a horrible cold. And then Wednesday, we were up and running again. Just realize that life's gonna happen. There's going to be things that are going to throw you off. But like I say in a lot of my videos, take control of the things that you can control and move forward from there. You need to remember to take breaks to rest and recharge. Like I talked about earlier, burnout is real, okay? And you do not want to experience 
burnout. It is the worst feeling ever. After experiencing the burnout that I experienced this past summer, oh, you do not need to tell me twice to rest. You do not need to tell me twice to take my weekend off anymore. No, nope. you do not need to tell me twice to listen to my body anymore. Take the breaks, rest, relax when you need to. Uh, it's important. It's important for longevity in this career or whatever goal that you are trying to achieve. And the last thing I wanna talk about is that you need to get better at saying no. And this is important for so many different areas in life, okay? When it comes to taking on more than you can handle, you need to learn when to say no. Overextending yourself when it comes to events with your friends and family, when it comes to all of the distractions that are gonna be thrown in your face while you're trying to get work done, you need to learn to say no. You need to learn how to have more mental toughness to push through and focus in on what's most important. So important to compartmentalize all of these different areas in our lives so we are able to be successful in the long run. Friday, if I'm trying to focus in on working hard and getting things done, that is not the time for me to be scrolling. And I need to remember that every single time I try to pick up my phone. Compartmentalizing things, learning when to say no is so important for this journey because you're not gonna get where you need to get without mental toughness, guys. These are all the tips I have. I always try to structure these videos in a way that is so realistic to everyday life. I think it's really important to talk about the things that are actually Actually going to help you be successful in different areas of your life whether it be in the workplace whether it be being self-employed whether it be within your fitness journey whatever it is I really just try to give realistic tips so let me know if this helped you down below are you feeling hopeful for this year or do you feel like you're rocking this year so far let me know down below and I will see you guys in the next video peace out Girl Scout Bye.